Okay, it's a bit later and I've read a bit more of the comic, Venturing Inside, although stopping briefly to look at the back cover where it's an advert for bicycles with some crazy 70s fonts and some kind of absolute last gasp of psychedelia artwork. Um, then opening the front cover inside front cover you get what looks like it's a comic strip because it's got superman in it and panels and balloons and all those sorts of things but it's actually an advert for hostess pies and there are a whole bunch of these not just in dc comics they're in marvel as well so somehow hostess pies could cross between the universes they were the original dessert of the multiverse but Getting to the real thing, the first page, the splash page. So remembering this amazing cover, we're now getting kind of a secondary promise of what the story is going to be. So here we see um, Cleopatra, Supergirl is strewing rose petals in front of her feet, Batgirl is holding her train, while the, the male members of the Justice League look on. Okay, and it says, A mystical scepter from the past upsets history and subdues a nation, leaving the Maid of Might, Supergirl logo, and the flame the flame-haired woman of the shadows, Batgirl logo, to battle the forces which have turned the United States into a monarchy, ruled over by... Cleopatra, Queen of America. Okay, so, great lead into the story. I'd totally forgotten that Supergirl would be referred to as the Maid of Might. You know, her cousin, Superman, Man of Steel, she, Maid of Might. Um, so here we have a super-length novel in three parts by Elliot S. Magin, writer, Kurt Swan and Vince Coletta, artist, Julius Schwartz, editor. Julie Schwartz, big editor of the Silver Age DC Comics, um, as an extremely young man, he corresponded with H.P. Lovecraft. Just throwing that in. Uh, for no reason. This is the Cleopatra story. Um, we're going to get... Oh, and there's dialogue too. Mr. President, it is my honour to present Cleopatra of the Potomac. It is Potomac, what? isn't it? Yeah. Not Potomac. This is Potomac. Okay. Yeah. And then the president is saying, I surrender my office, your majesty. The White House is yours. Great. Yep. So that's all happening. I'll buy that. Now, the story actually begins. And I've read the first of these three chapters of the, the novel in three parts. I've read the first part. Uh, so here we are at the Veland Art Museum, New Athens Experimental School. And this experimental school was where Linda Danvers, Supergirl's civilian alter ego, worked as an administrator. And it's a, an educational place that goes from um, kindergarten through to college. Uh, so here in this, the art museum part, which you can see this building with kind of art things on the, on the outside walls. Um, there's obviously a tour of some Egyptian exhibits and they're seeing the scepter that once belonged to Cleopatra, Queen of the Nile. And, uh, yep, it said the young Cleopatra never made a proclamation without holding the scepter in her hand. So there's this scepter, right? And then we meet, and this is brilliant, a young English woman who speaks with many English words, and her first dialogue is to say, Cor, that royal rod is lovely. <laughs> um, he doesn't say lovely, does he? Uh, sadly, no, no. Lovely. No, she's not Eliza Doolittle. Do <laughs> Nearly. Cor, that royal rod is lovely. And this scepter, scepter, remember, it's Cleopatra's original scepter, starts glowing, takes on a life of its own, and then she's holding it. She's holding the thing. Yeah. Cut. 
cut to a different part of the campus where the New Athens campus it's called um, where there's Linda Danvers in her day job she's Supergirl remember and there's a visit coming it's um, Barbara Gordon a congresswoman that's Batgirl so it's Commissioner Gordon's daughter is a congresswoman at this time uh, so and that, that gets the two heroes together Remember, it's special guest star issue, and um, they don't know each other's super identities. So they're getting together, having a nice chat, doing a campus tour. Done plenty of them in my time. Um, not with palm trees, though. A um, bit of stuff about what Congress is like. Uh, then meanwhile, back to... Said it was an English woman. Oh yes, right. As the rest of her art class moves on, this is what the English woman's called, Lily Bet Windsor. <laughs> so, oh my god, she's back with her friend. Isn't that like one of the actual like this princess is, women? No, it was Queen Elizabeth. Oh, her, oh. her nickname when she was little was Lily Bet. Oh yeah, like in the Crown. Yeah, and now the Meghan is one of them. Isn't it? Yeah, Rockshire. yeah. I don't think any of any of that's meant to be actually. She's not the Queen, but her name is Lily Bet Windsor with no D. She's, the... yeah. She's talking it's now to her friend Dana. And I tell you, Danny, the behaviour of those chaps was right, Rum. <laughs> Some of the English Boy, dialogue. Low. Because when she's holding the sceptre, everybody obeys her, you see. That's what that's what's rum about it. They stood entranced in an odd way. Um and yes, basically everybody's bow downing for to, towards to her. Uh, she says they were all positively bonkers. I guess it had something to do with the scepter, so I dropped the flipping stick. So basically, she's discarded the uh, the the magic scepter. <laughs> okay, um, uh, no one no no one cares anymore. Um, Right, yeah, yeah, so that's it. So then they're thinking, mm, maybe, maybe this power is some of this friend of hers, Danny. I'm not too sure about him. He thinks he's got designs on how this could all work out. And then there's a terrible high wind breaks out inside the buildings. Um, so that causes the superheroes to do their superhero thing. Linda Danvers becomes Supergirl, Great Krypton being swept up to the fourth floor um barbara gordon swinging around as batgirl rescuing people batgirl what a surprise so they meet each other not knowing who they are and um yeah they're helping out um and it's this scepter this damn scepter it's causing all the problems um, it's, it's, it's causing the wind and then ah, Lily Bet Windsor she's reached up and grabbed it um, now, now we'll see uh, so yes ooh, the wind's died down Lily Bet's got the scepter back oh what a wretched mess up the scepter made Struth I wouldn't want to dominate my chummies with this what? I don't know maybe Elliot S. Maggin like, must have lived in England or something to get this kind of Realistic English dialogue. Oh, yeah, that's exactly how most English people talk all the time. Dominate your chummies? What are you talking about? I mean, what indeed? I wouldn't want it to control the mind of anyone at New Athens. Um, yeah, so... Okay, so this Danny fellow, he knew, he knew about the history of it, that back in history, Cleopatra, with this very scepter, had control over people. She's getting some guy to swim over a river for her. Um, and ah, it turns out she's one of Cleopatra's descendants. Uh, but she hands it back to, to Supergirl, so that's all all right. Uh, let me see. Linda Danvers in her apartment with some mate of hers. Um, uh, but then it comes on the news that the, the Congress has abolished itself and they're having a queen instead who's a descendant of Cleopatra. Ah, oh, no, that's Lilibet Windsor, a student at New Athens. So some kind of exchange student, you see, with, with, with her chummies. Um, 
Right. right, so I'm heading to New Athens. That's Linda Danvers rushing out to see what's going on. And um, yeah, that's basically the end of the first section. So pretty exciting opening. Can't wait to see chapter two, Struth. Uh, it's going to be great. It's going to be ruddy great. Good to share it with your chummies. Do you? Yeah, I'm putting down the flipping comic now because that's the end of part two. I have a question. Okay, question from Dr. Jenny. Question from Dr. Jenny. What relation is Linda Danvers to Mrs. Danvers in that film book? Rebecca. Film, Rebecca. Well, I'm glad you asked me that because 